Hi, uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to convert a jar file into an OSGI bundle. Well, what differentiates an OSGI bundle from a normal jar file is the headers that are present in its manifest file, uh, specifically bundle symbolic name, bundle versioning. So these headers, they are read by an OSGI container and that is how a bundle is deployed on the OSGI container itself. So we can use the command line utility jar itself. If you want to create an OSGI bundle from a jar file, giving it a manifest file, having particular bundle headers. So let's just first take a look at the manifest file itself. So the headers that are present in our manifest file are related to the bundle that uh, we are going to create. Uh, using a jar file many of these headers are self-explanatory i'm just going to be discussing a couple of them the first one of them being uh, the bundle symbolic name so the bundle symbolic name it's a necessary header without this one a jar file is not an OSGI bundle it will not be recognized by an OSGI container as an OSGI bundle so what the symbolic name is whatever text you type in here for the bundle symbolic name this is going to be showing as this bundles name wherever you are listing these uh, bundles uh, be it uh, apache felix gogo shell or in my case aems uh, felix console so the name entry on uh, felix console is the symbolic name of each and every bundle that there is present the export package entry tells which java packages i want to export out of my bundle inside the package that i'm exporting i just happen to have a bean it does not use anything fancy apart from what's there in java standard edition so that's why i don't have any import package but if your jar imports anything other than java sc classes then those entries need to be listed here in import package header the last entry that I'm going to be discussing is a bundle class path. So the bundle class path header in my case, it's going to be a dot and the second entry would be the jar file itself. It should be the exact name of the jar file that I'm going to be using. So for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to be using my own Maven module, which has a single uh, bean and I'm going to be wrapping its jar up into an OSGI bundle. So how I'm going to do this is uh, first I'm going to create a jar file uh, from this module using Maven and then I'm going to wrap that jar file into an OSGI bundle so that I can deploy that bundle on an OSGI container. So let's first create a jar file itself. In the terminal here, I'm on this directory jar. Uh, this is the same directory. So now I'm going to package it uh, using Maven. Inside this directory, there's a target folder. Go to this target folder and you'll find your jar that is created by Maven. I need to wrap this jar into an OSGI bundle. To do that, I'm going to be using the command line utility jar itself. Uh, Let's just copy this from here and uh, open this in terminal. I'll just explain what it does. So I have this bundle now. I can deploy this bundle on an OSGI container. But let me first explain what I did with the jar command. So jar is name of the command line utility that I'm using. Very self-explanatory. I'm passing some flags to jar. C means compress and uh, its opposite is X. So if I type in jar uh, X, then it means I'm going to extract a jar file. V is for verbose mode for that. If there are any error while creating this bundle, it will show on the terminal. F is for the file name and M is uh, for the manifest file. So I pass in name of the file that is going to be created first and then I pass in the manifest file that I'm using. And in the end, I'm passing the jar file itself, which is going to be included in my in my bundle. So this command will create uh, this OSGI bundle. So now let's try to deploy this bundle on an OSGI container. Uh, I went to Felix console. 
I clicked on install now I'm choosing a file uh, it's inside target I'm selecting the bundle so now it's active okay so I have deployed my OSCI bundle on AEM which is just a wrapper for this uh, jar file one thing I forgot is to mention about uh, class path in order to understand why I added a bundle class path over here let's uh, go through an example uh, let me just close all these now suppose I have a bundle and uh, this bundle is using some uh, dependencies which are not in Java standard edition so let's take example of this uh, for this class I'm using uh, Jackson uh, if you don't know what Jackson is it's just a JSON parser you pass on JSON to the mapper and it'll convert that into a bean so Jackson does not come with the Java standard edition so in order to use Jackson I had to include its dependency ah, here it is so I had to include its dependency in uh, in the pom file itself so when you deploy this bundle maven is automatically going to deploy Jackson along with your bundle because that's what maven does but that will mean deploying multiple jars one jar for your project uh, the other one for Jackson if I was not using maven to deploy my packages then I would have to manually install those two different jar files into the OSGI container separately what if I have all the dependencies that my project needs embedded within its own bundle so that's what I'm going to do I'm just going to use maven to create an OSGI bundle for me which has all the dependencies embedded within the bundle itself for that I'm going to have to go to the maven bundle plugin configuration and within the maven bundle plugin configuration I'm going to pass on embed dependencies over here now I'll deploy this package within uh, AEM So let's just check on Felix console now. So here is my deployed uh, project over here and uh, in the OSGI bundle I can see that within the bundle class path there are two entries Jackson core and Jackson mapper that's what I added in uh, in the dependencies for maven so that means that my OSGI bundle has two separate jar files uh, and this bundle is acting up as a wrapper for them what that also means is that OSGI is not aware that uh, these jar files are there and uh, thus these uh, jar files are private to my own uh, own OSGI bundle and that is what the significance of this bundle class path is it is used to wrap up all the jar files that my bundle is going to need let me also show you the bundle on uh, my file system itself so within this jar target is the bundle and here is my jar file and uh, within the manifest.mf I have the bundle class path mentioning that there is a jar file which needs to be added to the class path for this uh, for this bundle and that is what it means that's all for this video smash that like button if you liked it uh, dislike it if you disliked it and please put on a comment uh, thanks for watching